Hello everyone, welcome to my channel that is Clinical Pharmacy Practice by Dr. Ashish Akshay I hope you all are fine and doing good. Okay, today I am going to talk about one of the uh, common occupational hazard or poisoning that is caustic poisoning, you must be knowing which includes inorganic acids and alkalis and here we are focusing uh, only inorganic acids and alkali okay moving on to the introduction uh, I, I want to clear one of the doubt regarding the caustics the term caustic is often mistakenly presumed to denote an alkali but not it, it is not like that uh, caustic is a substance which is uh, which can cause a corrosion or burning sensation or burning um, symptom on particular area okay uh, it can cause a corro corrosive action or can burning okay and these are the substance which is corrosive and burning in nature okay the caustics are often missing and presumed to denote an alkali but it's not like that obviously this would include apart from alkalis the more important group comprising acids like inorganic organic but here we will study only on inorganic acids and alkali okay and what are the inorganic alkalis we have and inorganic acids we have we have sulfuric acids, nitric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid, phosphoric acid, boric acid, chromic acid and we have common alkalis like ammonia and uh, hydroxides of sodium, potassium, calcium and carbonates of sodium and uh, potassium. You can easily understand by uh, the hydroxides which uh, what are the hydroxide which metals of hydroxide we can see is that sodium and potassium calcium but in the case of carbonates we have only two the starting ones like sodium and potassium okay so these are the common inorganic acids uh, we used to see in the caustic poisonings uh, like uh, sulfuric acid nitric acid hydrochloric acid in which the sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid uh, are the common ones and the common alkalis we used to see is hydroxide of sodium, uh, potassium, calcium and sodium potassium. Okay. Now, uh, these, this is the introduction of the caustic poisoning and what are the acids, common acids we uh, came across and what are the common alkalis we came across. Okay. Now we are heading towards the symptoms. What are the symptoms actually? Nausea we can see uh, in a caustic poisoning patient. We can see uh, vomiting, diarrhea, we can see uh, dizziness, we can see a confusion, headache, eczema or dermatitis. These are all the common and moderate symptoms. I'm not about talking about severe symptoms. Severe symptoms will come ahead. But these are the common and moderate symptoms which a caustic poison patient come across. Talking about severe, we can see renal injury like AKI, acute kidney injury. Coma, we can see. And we can see cardiac arrhythmias. We can see hepatic failure or hepatic injury respiratory arrest it can cause these are all the severe symptoms in uh, which we can see in a caustic poisoning patient and these which i already talked about the symptoms in clinical presentation this this these are in the written part okay which we have already covered it okay so it is very severe poisoning as you can see now what are the diagnostic measures we have the diagnosis is actually based entirely on history and exposure of the clinical presentation of the poisoning it uh, it is actually already uh, focused on history of exposure and and the clinical presentation means uh, if a person of caustic poison comes um, and approach the physician 
then the physician will already uh, going to focus on history and the clinical presentation none other than that because uh, as we know we don't have a specific antidote for the caustic poisoning one two uh, uh, acids we have we do have a one two uh, antidote for specific uh, like uh, one or two uh, acids only but we don't have for all the inorganic acids organic acids or alkali or the caustic poisonings we don't have so entirely the treatment is also dependent upon the supportive and symptomatic treatment as well as the diagnosis is also only depends upon the clinical presentation and history okay now the symptoms which are focused are presence of mean the symptoms which are related to the particular area uh, which we can uh, focus on like mucous membrane irritation cns depression the symptoms regarding cns depression symptoms regarding cardiac arrhythmia symptoms regarding hepatic necrosis hepatic failure aki uh, and we do have a specific levels like uh, we can go for a uh, blood picture like cbgs and all urine uh, urine we can uh, check like kidney function test we can go through breath concentration we can look like saturation rate and all okay and other useful test can also we can we can go for like serum electrolytes blood glucose bun which comes under the kidney function test only serum creatinine which also comes under the uh, kidney function test liver amino transfer uh, transferases like uh, yeah amino transferases like uh, lfts and prothrombin time as well as ecg monitoring okay so these are the diagnostic measures which we uh, re regularly used to go for that caustic poisoning patient okay now we can move further what are the treatments and supported treatment we have okay the treatment will be entirely focused that i already told that uh, treatment will entirely focused on symptomatic and supportive treatment okay it involves an open area first most uh, primary treatment will be like maintain an open airway and assist ventilation if necessary second will be treat treating the coma and as we all know that coma in coma particularly if we treat a coma we uh, particularly focus on hypoglycemia and we are uh, alerted towards the hypoglycemia uh, presentation of that coma patient so uh, for treating the coma we uh, we do prefer treating or normalizing the blood glucose level of the patient is uh, that's why we are supplying dextrose here and uh, we are also focusing on thymine naloxone possibly flumazenil but here in case in this coma uh, we are not giving a coma cocktail like uh, you 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 are uh, you are seeing like dextrose thymine naloxone and flumazenil it comes under coma cocktail which we can give but essentially uh, dextrose should be given to that caustic poisoning patient and uh, third one is we have to treat cardiac arrhythmias and we have to be alerted uh, towards the one point that we have to avoid the use of epinephrine and other sympathomimetic amines i repeat we have to avoid the use of epinephrine or other sympathomimetic agents like um, uh, epinephrine norepinephrine dopamine dobutamine we don't have to uh, give these sympathomimetic agents okay because it can induce or it can exacerbate or it can ag aggravate the arrhythmias of that patient like patient is already suffering from cardiac arrhythmias and again you have supplied these kind of drugs sympathomimetic drug then it uh, it will finally lead towards the cardiac arrhythmia or aggravate the arrhythmias so always remember we don't have to give epinephrine sympathomimetic agents in this particular caustic poisoning patient okay what are the drugs we can treat the cardiac arrhythmias of the patient probably we have very good uh, amount of drugs like uh, beta blockers okay we are we are focusing uh, mainly on beta blockers only okay like propranolol 1 to 2 mg and esmolol okay esmolol we will give 0.0 25 to 0.1 mg per kg in iv why we are giving propranolol or esmolol because they comes in iv formulation in emergency situation we always need an iv formulation and these are very uh, good uh, drugs which can be supplied via 
IV route of the patient. Okay. Then lastly, we will monitor patient for at least four to six hours after the exposure and longer if they are symptomatic. Okay. Now the treatment continued. Specific treatment. What are the specific treatment we have? Okay, we do have uh, some limited researches and which are controversial in nature. Only limited, uh, only limited type of researches we have, which suggests some of the agents to be given in a caustic poisoning patient. But yet also, I must quote that these are uh, uh, drugs which are to be used in limited uh, quantity or because we don't have researches okay these are controversial means we are in uh, still in a doubt whether we have to give these agents or not but if you want to apply you can apply in, a, in your clinical practice settings but yet you have to be under the medical supervision of that particular patient okay of that uh, for that particular patient okay now what what are the agents we have we have an style cysteine which can minimize or may minimize hepatic and renal toxicity by acting as a scavenger for the toxic intermediate okay and acetyl cysteine uh, we have found that an style cysteine can minimize the hepatic and renal toxicity by acting as a scavenger means it can entrap that toxic it can engulf something like that it can scavenge the toxic material inside your body and it can remove it Okay, so we have seen the resources which suggest, uh, which promotes an acetyl cysteine use. And other drug we have, simetidine. Okay, we have seen simetidine, it comes under famotidine, antidine, uh, these kind of agents. Okay, and uh, uh, we have calcium channel blocker. Okay, calcium channel blocker, you all know. And we have hyperbaric oxygen. Okay, what, what is actually hyperbaric oxygen? Hyperbaric oxygen is nothing but high pressure oxygen. Uh, we, ha uh, we do have uh, some articles which suggest hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy for that caustic poisoning patient because uh, it promotes the healing of uh, caustic poisoning patient little faster. And what is actually hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy? It supplies particular uh, patient with 100% saturation rate. Like we normally we used to see 98%, 99%. But in that hyperbaric oxygen therapy patient, we used to supply 100% oxygen with a high amount of pressure to the patient. Okay. These are all the treatment lines we can have. Okay, now we will move forward towards decontamination and uh, we will move forward towards enhanced elimination. Okay, let's see decontamination. What is decontamination? Actually, the decontamination can uh, we can uh, refer to as, as a primary uh, sort of treatment which is not uh, so much effective. But yes, it's a primary source uh, of treatment. Primarily, we have to do these kind of uh, activities before going for a treatment uh, in a drug part. And uh, what it includes? It actually it is divided according to the uh, routes which the patient is exposed by a po uh, poisoning okay the first one is uh, if the patient is poisoned by inhalation route what we have to do in a decontamination method we have to remove uh, uh, the patient from the exposure and give supplemental oxygen okay we have to remove the patient from that exposure and we have to give supplemental oxygen if, if available means if the patient is inhaling, inhaling the uh, caustic poisoning uh, substance we have if, if we have washed over the patient we have to remove that patient from that place we have to vacant that area and we have to give supplemental oxygen if available uh, in that case supplemental oxygen means you can uh, kiss to care uh, what uh, you can understand is uh, like <coughs> Kiss respiration. You must be heard of. Uh, you must be uh, very much uh, knowing that uh, kiss respiration is there uh, in an emergency situation. We can give. And second is skin and eyes. Means if the person is uh, poisoned uh, via root skin and eyes, then we have to remove contaminated clothing, wash that affected area with copious soap and water okay and if the patient uh, has exposed via eyes then we have to irrigate our uh, ir irrigate their eyes by copious saline of water 
and if the patient is ingested that caustic poisoning then we have to administer activated charcoal orally if condition are appropriate like activated charcoal we have already studied uh, what are the contra contraindication and what are the indication of activated charcoal in treating the poisoning of the patient okay we uh, we must be very much uh, in an uh, in expert that when to use an activated charcoal being a toxicologist you must be knowing about when to use the activated charcoal and when not to use means what are the indication and what are the contraindication and here if the condition supports to use activated charcoal then we must definitely give activated charcoal if the conditions are appropriate secondary we have to consider gastric lavage if the ingestion occurred within 60 minutes you all are knowing that gastric lavage should be done within the 60 minutes of the poisoning okay so these are the decontamination methods and what are the enhanced elimination method whether it has a scope or not so we come across that there is a no scope and there is a no role for dialysis hemoperfusion for specifically for caustic poisoning patient so enhanced elimination method cannot be applied uh, to the patient who has poisoned by a caustic substances okay so that's all we have completed uh, an overview and uh, what we can say a background information or last minute review of inorganic acid and alkalis poisoning so guys please like it share and subscribe my channel because it allows me to come up with more ideas and more knowledgeable videos for you all in a simplified manner so please support my channel and uh, and always uh, uplift me in promoting me for these videos. And with this, uh, I am leaving with a great thankfulness for you all. Thank you.